Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. Revelation 14, 15, and 16 today. Uh, if you remember, we are looking at the end of days and the end of times. We've been looking uh, at a lot of the judgments and today uh, we are going to be continuing that. Yesterday was the woman, the dragon. We looked at the beast of the, what was it? The beast of the sea and the beast of the earth. So we looked at those today. Uh, we are going to be looking at uh, the land, the 144,000, the three angels, the harvest of the earth, uh, the seven angels and seven plagues, and then also the seven bowls of God's wrath. So again, 14, 15, and 16. So chapter 14. Did I say the land? Lamb, the lamb and the 144,000. <laughs> uh, so let's hear about that again, chapter 14. Uh, then I looked and there before me was the lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps and they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God and the lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed him, or followed them, and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast, beast and his image and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured out, or poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image, or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Then I heard a loud voice from heaven say, Right. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. <clears throat> I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and the blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as horses' bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. Chapter 15 I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues, and because of them, God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like the sea of glass mixed with fire, and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and his image, and over the number of his name, they held harps given them by God, and sang the song of Moses, and the, ser the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the Ages." 
Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this, I looked, and in heaven, I looked, and in heaven the temple, that is, the tabernacle of the testimony, was opened. Out of the temple came seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen and wore golden sashes around their chests. One, then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels the seven gold, golden bowls filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with the smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Chapter 16. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go, pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly and painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second angel poured, the, poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood, like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, You are just in these judgments, you who are and who were the Holy One, because you have so judged. For they have shed the blood of your saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. Then I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. They were or smeared by the intense, excuse me, seared by the intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its river or, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the east. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are the spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not go, go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together in the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake has ever occurred since man has been on earth. So tremendous was the, was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred... A hundred pounds each fell upon men, and they cursed God on account of the terrible plague, or on the plague of hail, because the plague was so terrible. Again, we're going to keep seeing what this looks like, really, but I think it's so important to recognize what the end means and what that recognition looks like. I mean, we see part of that, or a similar portion of that, in 15, what are we, verse 3, um, tail end of 2. They held harps given to them by God, verse 3, and sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the Ages, uh, King of the Ages, chapter, uh, verse 4. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. I think that's important recognition, really, that at the end of days, all people are going to bow. Everyone is going to bow. Even the people who don't believe in God or don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God or our Savior, everyone will bow. Every knee will bow. But that gives us kind of a cool opportunity. And my prayer for you today, really, is that you take every opportunity 
to bow and to worship. I mean, everyone at the end of days is going to be forced to because they are going to see the glory of God and some to great, great joy. And I believe others to great fear because it is too late. Anyway, my prayer for you is that you would make the most of every opportunity now, that you would worship and pray, and that you would have holy reverence for God. Um, that is a lifelong thing to be remembering, but as always, so, so important. Anyway, know that I love you, and I'm praying that for you. For anyone else that is joining, as always, know that I appreciate you so much, and I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.